Hey punks, welcome back to university. Today's lesson will be a Radlands 101 beginner's tips. Uh, so we're going to go over a few things today, maybe some that are on the um, easier side of the spectrum to kind of get into rotating into your gameplay, and then some that might be a little more um, advanced or take a little bit of getting used to when you're figuring out more of the uh, strategies of the game. Uh, so the first thing that I'll go over in this beginner tip video is uh, Raiders. The Raiders are probably one of the most consistent ways to deal damage directly to your opponent's camps. Uh, normally you would play people in front of your camps to protect them, but um, after the Raiders resolve after a couple of turns, then your opponent must damage one of their camps. So whether you try to find a camp that will help you launch the raiders, you try to find a scout in the deck to pay water for the raiders or just junk cards for the raiders, and it's probably something in your game plan that you're going to want to um, put into rotation. Uh, it's just another way or another aspect of the game that makes your opponent have to worry. Now, with Raiders, it does take a couple of turns to resolve, so they have some time to plan for it, but besides relying on people or camps to deal damage, you're then also consistently putting damage on the event queue as well, and that's just another front that you can attack your opponent with. Now, you can maybe be over uh, zealous with the Raiders, and, and your opponents can take advantage of that, so it's not the only thing that you want to do, but sometimes when you're first starting the game, it's, it's easy to forget that this is an event that you have access to almost all the time uh, during the game. So if you're, if you're not playing the Raiders a lot, I would recommend maybe a few times trying a Raiders-centric strategy just to see how it um, helps or changes uh, the gameplay and how your opponent then plays against you. The next beginner tip that I would like to throw out there is uh, junk, junking. Uh, coming from other kinds of um, dueling or competitive card games, normally you're wanting to keep your hand of cards. Uh, these are a resource, and in this game they're also a resource, but they're not just uh, dead cards in your hand if you're waiting to use them. That's what's great about this game, is you always have a secondary way to uh, surprise your opponent or use your cards. Um, whether it's restoring, uh, drawing cards, injuring people. Don't be afraid, especially if it's going to help you uh, win or help your combos or strategies to junk cards. Um, especially if you don't think you're going to use those cards in the next one, two, three turns tops. Um, if they're just sitting in your hand, um, it might be best to junk them for their ability and use that effect right then and there to put more pressure on your opponent. Um, I know when I first started playing the game, again, my, my background being other competitive card games where maybe you're limited on how much you can draw or you're wanting cards in your hands to have for later on. Uh, this is kind of that game. Again, you're limited on your card resources, but at the same time, uh, no card is ever dead. So if you're not junking right now, again, maybe try a game where you're junking a little bit more just to see how it feels and see how it affects or throws off your opponent. So we have Raiders. We have uh, Don't Be Afraid to Junk. Uh, the next beginner's tip is uh, when you're picking your camps, uh, maybe make sure you have a, a varied set of camps. So there's a few things you can think of when picking camps is the amount of cards you can start with. Um, if you can find maybe combos between them. So, so one uh, prevalent camp combo is maybe uh, a punk centric combo. Maybe you have arcade and then um, training camp, those kind of combo well together. But if you don't have those combos or you're, or you're not able to find a lot of card draw, um, vary your sets of camps. So the rule book gives you great starting camp examples that really showcase um, 
how effective this can be, that you want to vary what your camps can do. So one of the starting set of camps they recommend is Supply Depot, Garage, and Railgun. So here with these camps, yeah, you only start with two cards, but you almost always have an answer for everything. You have a damage camp, you have a raider's camp, and you have a camp to help you draw and mill through the deck, which helps your lower starting hand out in the long run. Uh, the other starting set of camps uh, that the rule book recommends is Reactor, Cannon, and Victory Totem. So again, we've got another camp that uh, injures and sends out raiders. We have another damage dealing camp. And then we have a camp that's just going to just wipe out the whole board whenever you need it. So that's really something to think of. You don't want all your camps to do one thing. You don't want all damaging camps. You don't want all restore camps. You don't want all raiders camps. Uh, because when you're needing a different answer than what you've um, set yourself up with, having varied camps really helps with that. So that's the third one. Vary the types of camps that you pick if you can't find certain camp combos that you're looking for. Uh, the next kind of maybe advanced kind of beginner tip is to protect your key people and not necessarily always protecting your camps. Um, so the name of the game, you know, is you, you are protecting your camps because as soon as they're all hit twice, well, then they're, they're destroyed and they're damaged. But part of the strategy of this game is knowing um, which cards of yours are important to protect for your combos and your strategies. So, for example, if you've spent four water to play a Mulgar Stang, uh, that's probably a pretty important card to protect because of how much your investment was. So maybe playing a person in front of him um, over maybe one of your other camps that aren't as important as him is, is a good idea. So just keep that in mind that it might be worth having a camp damaged or even a camp completely lost if it allows you to keep your really powerful people and combos in play. Um, you know, another important one that maybe costs a little less is Sniper and being able to damage any card. That might be a card that you want to protect over some of your other camps. Now, this is something that you'll kind of learn over time as you're playing the game and as you're figuring out which cards work best together, maybe what camps that you've, what camps you've picked just to have for card draw that maybe aren't as important uh, compared to those people that will help you win the game over the camps. So it's worth protecting those people that you've invested a lot into and that could help you win the game. And the last beginner's tip that I have is you then, besides protecting your key people and combos, is you want to be able to shut down your opponent's key people and combos that they're trying to do. So again, if you see your opponent play a Mulgar Stang or a Sniper, or maybe they have a Raider-centric camps, and then they play a Scout, and you know they're going to get raided a lot, you want to be able to keep an eye out and find ways to interrupt what your opponent is trying to do. Um, that way, your key people and combos can continue to go off. So that's that's the great thing about this game. And the fine line that you've got to um, thread along is when to move and advance your combos and people, but then at the same time, uh, when to try to stop or shut down what your opponent is trying to do. And there's that push and pull between the two people as they uh, do that song and dance, as they say. Uh, so that's all the beginner tips that I have for you. We'll go over this again really quick. You know, Make sure that you are uh, raiding. It's going to be a consistent form of damage to your opponent's camps. Um, don't be afraid to junk. Uh, the cards in your hands don't have to be dead. Uh, there's always a secondary action you can take with your cards. Uh, vary the type of camps that you decide to pick and play in the game, so that way you kind of always have um, an answer or another avenue that you can take to um, interact or bombard your opponent. Uh, know when to protect your key people over certain camps, especially if it's going to help you uh, win the game in the long run, where you know a, a camp might not as much. And then be sure to shut down your opponent's key people and the combos that they're trying to set up. And that's 
going to help you win the game. So if you have any of your own beginner's tips that you'd like to comment down below, feel free to do so. And as always, stay thirsty, punks. <laughs>